February marks five years since the brutal rape and murder of teenager Nin Boysen, which sent shockwaves across the world and triggered angry protests countrywide. I returned to Bredarstorp in the Western Cape where Nin died and where four more young girls have been violently raped and killed. Despite the gruesome details of Anin's death that made global news headlines, we find little has changed in a forgotten community. Generations of young people grow up and they've forgotten or they've not been uh, exposed to the lessons that we get from the Anins of this world. Wish that we could immortalize her and say she changed the future for our country. Bredarstorp, February 2013. A young teenager is found raped and brutally attacked. Anin was left for dead after her attacker disemboweled her. That same day, Anin died from her injuries. I traveled to the sleepy farming town of Bredarstorp in the Western Cape to interview her shocked family to try and grasp the circumstances surrounding her murder. It is not unreal to think that she is not more than she Okay, wij zijn. Ah, gaat ze. Dus ik wil dat je weet waar mee te krijgen. <laughs> Jij weet. Zij weet bij haar en haar jelle verstand, ik zal haar komen zoek naar wat ze is. En daar is het moeilijk. Dat denk ik nou. Die... Around the same time the brutal death of this 21-year-old student, Nirbaya, after she was gang-raped, sparked a nationwide protest movement thousands of kilometers away in India. The mass protest movement led to significant policy changes to address that country's national rape crisis. Back in South Africa, a seemingly similar mass movement was ignited by Anin's violent attack. Anin's death did not prevent a staggering 110,000 more rapes being reported to police since 2013, a figure many believe is underreported. We approached the Psychological Society of South Africa for answers. It's, I think, uh, an urban-rural divide as well as a class issue. So if it were somebody well-known in the urban areas, that memory would have been kept alive. But this was uh, a young uh, female out in the sticks. And there was an outpouring of emotion, particularly through mobilization by people in that community that hit the headlines. Otherwise, it would have gone uh, unnoticed. As the five-year commemoration date of Anin draws closer, I decide now will be a good time to return to Bredarstorp in the Western Cape. I want to put a face to another murder victim from the same community. The Western Cape High Court wraps up this latest case of rape and murder that took place in 2015, also of a teenager and also from Bredarstorp. The case dates back to 2015 when the 28-year-old Zimbabwean national Gift Sabondo is arrested for the kidnapping, rape and murder of 15-year-old Alda Jafta. Her battered body was found hidden under Gift's bed days after she went missing. Her mother Iefa says the family got increasingly worried when their daughter started spending time with the much older Gift, a so-called Enlöper a term widely used in Bredarstorp to describe new residents who come from outside of town. Yefa says this photo of Alda as a young girl is one of a very few that she has of her daughter. 
ik heb een dochter gebracht, ik heb een wijs die een foto in het zet. Dat is nog een voorbeeld. Dat het van een nieuw boy is, zo bizar. Maar. Ze heeft ook even mee, heb ik die kop gegeven. Ik maak ook die knarsen die ze alle meester heeft. Voor je ouders, als je ouders om te met alle apparaten. Jeffa says two years earlier in 2013, she reported her daughter has kidnapped when Gif took Alda without anybody's knowledge and left town. The two were tracked down and Gift was arrested, but the case of kidnapping and rape against him was later dropped. <laughs> I can't do my own work, but I can't do my own work. 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 I can't do my Gift eventually convinced the teenager to move in with him and according to her family, he would often physically abuse Alda. In 2015, the teen's body was found here, inside Gift's house. A few weeks ago, the Western Cape High Court handed down two life sentences in the kidnap, rape and murder case against Gift Sabondo. Tijd maar nou wat hij gevonden is, is dat ik nu blij dat hij gestraft is. Dat hij dat niet verdient voor mij kan. Want ik zal hij weer niet kunnen terugkrijgen. Elda is one of an alarming number of other young girls who have been raped and murdered since Anin's shocking case in 2013, all within a 30 meter radius in this area. February 2015, five-year-old Katie Williams, abducted, raped and strangled to death. May 2015, 15-year-old Alda Jafta, raped, kicked, punched and strangled to death. April 2016, Solnita Mano, gang raped, her genitals mutilated, her naked and beaten up body found displayed outside a fence in a public area. And while I return here to the scene of Anin's bloody attack five years after her death, in a stunning twist of irony, a mere 200 meters away, the murder of Jodine Peters, 16 years old, at this empty limestone factory. Here inside this empty reservoir, gang raped, her genitals mutilated, her skull crushed, and her body set alight. Shocked residents gather outside Jodine Peter's house, a now familiar scene in this community. En dat we staan ons erg hoe die familie van Anin moest gevoel het. En um, hoe zoveel honderden andere families elke dag voel. Elke dag van hier die koraal lees en die lees van hier die type goed. Dan denk jij als maar dit nog een moord en nog een familie. Totdat hier die dan erg op de eigen fjouw komt. En dan besef je even. En ik bedoel, 17 jaar, 16 jaar, was zij voor mij geleden. Wat men was, als ik aan moet denk. Maar ik is te vrede om haar terug te gaan naar maken. Less than a week later, family members gather at Jodine's memorial service. Al dag, al dag, overal waar zij kom, alles wat zij doen, doen zij zang, zang. Dat was haar passie. 
Santa Santa. Pai ali foi coisa, sei tem coisas para limpeza de espelho, que são coisas, coisas para africanos, coisas para me referir, mas eu vou começar aqui a coisa a cantar. Pensei, mas pai ali foi coisa, que são. One of the aspects that fueled the outrage following Anine Boysen's rape and murder in 2013 was the brutality of her attack. As I drive through the streets of Predarstorp, so-called Onerdorp, a small radius where RDP houses are built close to each other, I'm struck by the similarities of the brutality of the latest attack on Jardine Petersh. We're the only country in the world to have the high levels of violence that we do without war. The matter of rape is because of our warped socialization and a feeling of entitlement by insecure, inferior men that they can take and because you are a chattel, you are below me. I'm already inferiorized. I have a weak sense of myself, but you are less than I am, so I can just do what I feel like. When I visited Pradarstorp in 2013, I became aware of the significant impact of the migrant labour system on family life in this farming community. Many children are still raised by so-called grootmakmaas, or foster mothers. It's commonplace that many of these foster arrangements are only formalised much later in a child's upbringing, if at all. Anine Boysen was also raised by a grootmakma or foster mother. During our interview in 2013, her foster mother, Cordelia Olivier, explained. The police are here, with her oma and her. And to tell her father, the oma was told that her mother was always come and and all to her father or her father to the ma and her Cordelia battled to cope with Anine's death and was diagnosed with cancer a few months after this interview. She passed away in 2014. I managed to meet Marco Ulifir, Anine's grootmaakpa, or foster father. Every day she comes here, she asks in the morning, but in the morning of my wife, if the wife doesn't want to go to the house, Anine was still so clean. And I think that for the last six months, in a community with seemingly few positive role models for the youth, I learned that Marco was in jail at the time of Anin's murder for the rape and assault of his former partner. In the En hij heeft van mij die story komen vertellen over aan hen en ja en ik was bij haar zeer gewis over dat die vrouw dat van kijk dat ik en was dus mijn kind. Dat ik nou weer hij die persoon gaat nou arresteren wordt verstaan. En ik had al niet gedacht dat hij dat hij naar de kom verstaan. Zeker goed dat zijn jullie die verdacht hebben want zij 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 on a farm on the outskirts of Pradarstorp, another stepfather's fate is tied to that of Marco Haramse. For the first few years of his life, Klaas Rikers helped raise the boy who decades later, as a young man, would stand trial for Anin's brutal rape and murder. He was um And now Lee, um, Salak Nusia and I think, uh, I told up a whole, whole of food and hot. Oh, my, my school, I thought no has, how very drunk in. So, my as in a be always come as in a healthy. And so, so come back in a body, who would have out. Would you add it also? I'd just Ja, maar voor die, die, die dat ik zelf als eet geknopt, 
Und so, ob er dann geplagt. Ja, sie meisten wollen nur nicht, weil Gloen ja kann alle mal kommen, kein Dier. Ein Bedal, ein auch. I'm intrigued by these big frames in Lena's lounge, where she displays the newspaper clippings of her son's controversial case. How come you have these clips as well? How come is it for you important? Ah, the mesa can see. Lena has only seen her son once since 2014, when he started serving out his life sentence in Mangaung Maximum Prison in Bloemfontein. I believe that they can tell us what they are doing. I can't even see my son. Hij zal niet zo goed als aanvang. Hoe kom je? Als hij zelf schuldig gepleit heeft. Maar ik geloof niet dat aan hij zal het gaan doen dat hij mijn vrouw was. Maar hij is niet zo type kind. Maar hij kent niet zo goed. Kijk, een maak kent me zo'n kind. Ik wil hier die jaren van hem. Die trommelse dieren met die jaren van hem opmaak. A mere two days after Jadine Peters' murder, two local men from Bredasdorp were arrested and appeared in court. One of the community members who came out in support of the Peters family is this man, Niku September, who we interviewed in 2013. Niku is the uncle of the first suspect, who was initially arrested for Anin Boysen's murder five years ago. I arranged to meet Niku at his house in Bredastor. During the filming of our documentary in 2013, this man, Niku's nephew Jonathan Davids, was in police custody for Anin's murder. Jonathan is also nicknamed Zwai, and he was a good family friend of Anin. Anin whispered the name Zwai before she died, and police arrested Jonathan that same day. Another man, Johannes Kana, was also arrested alongside Jonathan, and Johannes would later confess to the rape and murder of Anin. As for Jonathan, all charges against him were eventually dropped. Jonathan says at the time of his arrest, he was unaware that Anin had died. I was a sad man. Now the police, the spirit of my belief, I was so sad to hear him was his death. So they didn't say he lived no. But the hospital, they said the doctor was. To hear him, but the doctor, the doctor, no me on the soup. To hear him, he's long gone to it. A man, then. Bij de hoofdkruik kom je. Toen zie ik ook maar om. Ik heb hem nog nooit gezien. Ik ken hem ook maar nog niet. Maar die man die wat ik nog leer ken het. En die tronk nou toen ik nu aan kom. Dan kan ik je dat gaan je wezen. Maar ik denk dat ze dat ze hier niet. Alle wijze met elkaar ja maar. Hij heeft daar niet door te maken. Hij heeft ook klaar om te gaan aan die tronk. When I interviewed Jonathan's uncle, Niku, in 2013, he expressed his concern over growing criminal elements within Bredasdorp. I asked him if anything has changed since then. So many things have happened. I don't know if things have changed for other people. There is absolutely nothing for us young people. There is nothing for us. There is no facility, but there is no money. So they have to use alcohol, they have to use drugs, and there is nothing else to do with it. One of the promises made by government of Tanin's murder was to establish a youth skills development center to address the high levels of unemployment and poverty amongst the youth. The Tanin Boys and Skills Center was built in 2014 by the Department of Higher Learning at a cost of 10 million rand. Today the center stands unused and offers nothing to the town's poverty-stricken youth. A stark reminder of the many empty promises made in Bredarstorp at the time of Anin Boysen's death. Exactly five years after her death, Anin's father returns to her grave at the local cemetery. In the weeks following Anin's brutal attack, then Minister of Women Affairs pledged to establish a national commission into the rape and violence of women and children. I think the big one also for me is what our term political will. 
which I think the, the good first steps were there because the then president said uh, to the uh, former minister of uh, children, women and, and, and people with disabilities, Lulu uh, Tlingwana, go and ensure there's a plan to deal with gender-based violence or sexual violence. And that was the best, I think, at the government level of a, a, a talk to a develop a national strategic plan to deal with the schedule of violence. What happened to it um, five years later? Civil society movements are still calling for it. A stone's throw from an inch grave, Jodin Peters' family buries their daughter. The irony of returning to Bradarstorp to find yet another teenage girl brutally killed weighs heavily on my mind. I wonder why, with all the indications of a national movement stirring in 2013, Anin's death did not propel us into a unified force against the growing violence inflicted on our women and our girls. If you raise, do you remember Anin voice and very few people will say who, where, how, and you have to actually show them those what happened then and the headlines for them to remember because we also a denialist society. We tend to deny those things and happenings that disturb our comfort zones. So we go about it. We ignore the overwhelming presence of violence and their triggers in our environment. Wish that we could immortalize her and say she changed the future for our country in how we think about ourselves and our children. I saw you, 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 I saw you,